This is my second video lesson for the unit atomic theory. Today we're going to talk about how can we draw and interpret chemical notation. So go to page 6 in the class packet. Motivation. Where is the atomic mass, atomic number, and number of electrons for carbon in the reference table? So take a moment, go to the reference table, and look for this information. Once you find it, resume this video. So if you have done it, you will have found this information on the periodic table. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to write and interpret the chemical notation of an element. So for announcements, just do homework number two, which is a junipod. So this is the periodic table from your reference table. So notice that it tells you the atomic mass, atomic number, and electron configuration. Through the electron configuration, we could get the number of electrons. Okay, so let's uh, zoom in a bit. So, symbol is the abbreviation of the element's name. So, this is carbon. So, carbon abbreviated to be C. So, usually it's the first letter or first two letters, right? So, carbon is C, helium is HE. So, obviously, H is taken by hydrogen. So now let's look at atomic number now. Atomic number stands for the number of protons. All atoms of the same element have the same number of protons. So think of the atomic number as a ID number for the atom. So elements are arranged by increasing atomic number on the periodic table. So what is the atomic number of calcium? So try to do this yourself. Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So if we look at the periodic table, calcium is Ca. If we don't know that, go to table S to look that up. So the answer is three, 20. So calcium has 20 protons. Next is atomic mass. Atomic mass is the average weight of all atoms of the element found in nature. Okay, so we'll come back to atomic mass in unit nine, okay? And we'll explain why this number is a decimal. Mass number. Mass number is equal to proton plus neutrons. So here is the mass number. We have 12. So notice this number is not on the periodic table. Okay. So to get that mass number, you round the atomic mass to get the mass number. You only do it if it's not given to you in the question. If it is given to you, do not do the step. So if you notice, it's always a whole number, all right? You're never going to get a decimal. Atomic mass is a decimal, all right? Mass number is always a whole number. So mass number can vary among the same elements. Carbon can be 12, carbon can be 13 or 14, for example. Whenever you come across these questions, use what is given first as a priority. If you have no other information, then use the reference table. Learning check number two. What is the mass number of an atom that has six protons, six electrons, and eight neutrons? So pause the video and try to do this yourself. So we know mass number is proton plus neutrons. So we have six plus eight, that's 14. That's choice three. Next is electron configuration. It tells you how many electrons that atom has and how it is arranged. So orbitals are where the electrons are located in the atom. So carbon has six electrons. How do we get this? If you notice from electron configuration, it's 2-4. You just add up these numbers. So let's look at this model. So the electrons are the black dots, right, that are on this ring or circle. They are basically the orbital shells and energy levels. That's what these rings stand for. On the regions, when it comes to this model, these terms basically mean the same thing. They use interchangeably. But there is a slight difference between orbitals and energy level, which I'll discuss in a future PowerPoint. But for now, on the regions, they basically mean the same thing and use interchangeably. So if we look at the electron configuration, the 2-4 means there's two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second shell. Let me check number three. What is the number of electrons in a potassium atom? So pause the video and try to do this yourself. Okay, 
So first you gotta look up the symbol of potassium. So it is not P, it is actually K. So check table S and don't be lazy because you sometimes may get it wrong if you're lazy. So next you look up the atomic number of potassium, that is 19, right? Next you look up the electron configuration and you add up all the electrons. If you do that, it adds up to 19. Okay, so this makes sense because the atom is neutral. So you expect the electrons to be equal to the protons. So now let's put everything together. This is a chemical notation. It's also known as atomic notation or elemental notation. So let's analyze it. X is basically the element symbol. On the top left is the mass number, which is proton plus neutron. On the bottom left is your atomic number. So sometimes the atomic number might be left out or invisible, but you can still figure out the atomic number of the element. For example, here we have fluorine with a mass number of 19. You can figure out the atomic number by looking it up on the periodic table. Only one element has a symbol F, which is fluorine, and all atoms of fluorine have the same atomic number, which is 9. Let me check number 4. Which diagram represents the nucleus of the atom of aluminum? So try to use yourself, pause the video, and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so let's go over it. So the atomic number is 13. That's the number of protons. So 1 is wrong. So 27 is not the neutrons. It is proton plus neutrons. All right? So you got to do 27 minus 13. That will give us 14. And 14 is the number of neutrons. So the answer is 2. Learning check number five. Given the chemical notation above, what is the number of protons? So pause the video and try to do this yourself. Okay, so here's the answer. So nine is the atomic number that is the number of protons. Learning check number six. Given the chemical notation above, what is the number of neutrons? So try to do this yourself, pause the video, and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so the answer is choice two, 10. So remember, mass number is proton plus neutrons, so 19 minus 9 is 10. Let me check number 7. Given the chemical notation above, what is the number of electrons? So try this yourself, pause the video, and resume once you have the answer. So since we're given the atom, we assume it is neutral, unless stated otherwise. So since it has 9 protons, it must have 9 electrons, so choice 1. Learning check number 8. Given the chemical notation above, what is the number of electrons? So try this yourself, pause the video, and resume once with the answer. Okay, so first we got to figure out what is the atomic number of this element. So Ne is neon. Neon has an atomic number of 10. And since it's an atom, we assume it is neutral unless stated otherwise. So it must have 10 electrons. So now I want you to work on the free check of understanding. So try to use yourself and resume once you have the answers. Okay, so let's go over fluorine first. So we already did the first three as a learning check. The atomic number of fluorine is 9. The mass number is 19. And we're talking about the element fluorine. So for check of understanding number 2, the number of protons is 92. Neutrons, you got to do 238 minus 92. That's 146. Number of electrons for this atom, right? So assuming it's neutral, so that's 92. Atomic number is 92. Mass number is 238. And the element is uranium. So for Cl, the number of protons, it is 17, right? So number of neutrons is 20, 37 minus 17. Number of electrons is 17, because it's a neutral atom. Atomic number is 17. Mass number is 37, and this is the element chlorine. This is a summary, and this is a more detailed summary. How, how to get the number of protons, how to get the number of neutrons, and how to get the number of electrons. So now I want you to work on this practice question. So try to practice by filling up the table given the information. So sometimes you're given the chemical notation, sometimes you're given either protons, neutrons, electrons, or atomic number or mass number. So pause the video, 
Resume the video once you completed the entire table. Okay, so here's the answers. So this concludes the video lesson for today. You could do more practice on the next page with some multiple choice and free response regions questions. Remember to do the Junipod homework.